Not getting hired because they shot Fuji? That sounds like camera brand discrimination. Got this comment on yesterday's video. The core of it is that investing into Fuji really means no second shooting work when just starting out. And that's crazy, right? That's crazy, right? Or is it? Where's my Fuji hat? And also, one of these cameras is an APS-C camera and one is a full frame. Find out at the end which is which. This comment has been this person's honest experience in the world of getting into wedding photography. So I'm curious, has this happened to anyone else? It's something that I've never even considered when recommending Fuji cameras. And yes, it is true that it's been a minute since I have personally been looking for second shooting jobs myself. When I was doing that in 2005, I sent out 150 emails and only one dude got back to me and he tried to sell me a flash, so I bought it. And by paying that toll, he allowed me the second shoot for him for a few wedding days, which was nice. I also don't know how much consideration he put into gear. He knew that I shot Nikon and so did he. So maybe he did care. Uh, also an important point on that. We both owned the Nikon APS-C 10.5 millimeter fisheye. That might've been the piece of gear that he really cared about most. You can shoot any system as long as you got a fish. <laughs> Plot twist, that photographer now shoots Fuji. Also, if you are into wedding photography, I just started a dedicated channel for only wedding photography. So if you're interested, come on over there, subscribe. There's an all new behind the scenes that I just put up from Big Sur in California a few weeks ago. I'd be happy to have you over there. Okay, does shooting full frame, actually, have you figured it out yet? Is it this, is this the full frame? Is this the full frame? I'm going to attempt to look at this issue from a third party perspective and from a few different angles. And you let me know what you think in the comments. I'm also not going to lock this into just this specific experience, but to try and analyze why this may have happened to others in different situations with different photographers as well. For me, in my personal business, as long as you shoot one of the main four systems, I don't care which one. Imagine we'll process all the images to look like they're from the exact same camera anyways. And also if you're not on the AI editing thing yet and you're a wedding photographer, please use a link in the description. It has absolutely transformed my workflow and it is incredible. If you use a link, you get 1500 free edits rather than the usual 1000 edits if you just go to the Imagine website. Now back to Fuji. I think for this to make sense, I have to remove myself from what I know. Uh, maybe I'm too comfortable with Fuji as I use their cameras often. I've shot an X-T3, an X-T4, and an H2S on real wedding days as main cameras, and I've been very happy with the results. So to put my mind in a place that I have never used a Fuji camera, maybe it would be a little bit scary. Uh, maybe APS-C is a bad word because full frame has a better name when it comes to branding. To me, full frame actually sounds better than medium format. Medium format sounds halfway to full frame, and Micro Four Thirds has the worst sounding name, and it's probably time for a rebrand on that. So I understand the APS-C prejudice. A lot of us for our first camera, all we could afford was an APS-C camera and eventually we moved on to the jalapeno big guy full frame. So to some, maybe Fuji feels like an entry level brand. Spoiler, it's not. Next theory, they've had a bad experience in the past with the Fuji shooter, kind of like the priest that had that, that butt photographer climb it all over them during the ceremony and they made this blanket rule to just ban all photographers and make them all stand at the back. So now it's a rule based on that one outlier bad experience. So maybe the lead shooter hired a Fuji shooter in 2014 and that photographer didn't really have the best knowledge in weddings and shot everything inside at 10,000 ISO, F16, three stops underexposed, and the entire set of images were unusable. But that's not all, I have more theories, two more theories. First, next theory. Maybe it's just a macho flex on a younger photographer to show how big and cool the established pros are. They just want to put themselves on the cool guy alert so everyone knows that they shoot the big guy only Nikon D3S and the 200 to 500 all day long. Or next, maybe the equipment wasn't the problem at all. It was just an attempted polite way to decline second shooting services. It's an easy hard stop to the conversation. Okay, one more. Maybe the person that taught them photography made them buy the same kit from the same brand when they were first getting started, and that is just what they're most comfortable with. Or they're self-conscious about their post-production and matching images, and they've had some issues in the past with Fuji files because they're not using Imagine AI editing. Link down below, honestly, go use it. Use the link though to get the bonus edits, 1500 of them, so you can edit like a wedding or two. Editing note, I feel like the easy answer is probably the correct answer, and that is just that people feel that full frame is the industry standard and that they haven't really looked into Fuji a whole lot and they haven't explored how great it is. From my perspective, I feel like saying no to someone because they shot Fuji but are fine with Sony, Nikon, or Canon, it's because they just don't understand Fuji. Unless I'm wrong, and this is a real thing happening to lots of people all around the world, and maybe it's the real reason that I only know, I'm gonna say three wedding photographers in real life that shoot with Fuji as primary, and maybe the reason that I only know three is because it's so hard to get jobs in the beginning, second shooting jobs, that they never get experience and they never actually get to a business of their own. Is this true? What do you think? Have you figured out the camera yet? 
This one's the APS-C. And don't forget to go check out the all new dedicated wedding photography channel on the screen right now. Don't forget to subscribe. So thanks for watching today here. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think.